Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying your day at the National Interstate Churches Network Conference so far. My name is Dr Amy King and I'm going to share with you in this short presentation uh, some of my PhD research which looked into the faith motivations of those involved with estate churches. This is a short presentation um, but there's an opportunity to access a longer um, op uh, exploration of my research uh, in a National Estate Churches Network webinar on Tuesday the 26th of November at 7pm and it would be really great um, if as many of you as possible um, could join uh, and there'll be more opportunity to hear about um, the, the kind of full breadth of my research. This is really just a kind of taster um, and be able to ask some questions and things. Uh, so within this research uh, I was an insider researcher um, and that's uh, an exploration of uh, a place where uh, in my case uh, I'd lived and grown up um, and also worked at two of the organisations to be researched, which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, throughout this presentation, I will talk about Evergreen uh, as the place that I researched. That is a pseudonym, um, so that is a made-up name, um, and that just protects the anonymity of the participants. Uh, so the research was with clergy, staff and volunteers. Uh, the two denominations of church that were researched were a Church of England Church and a Salvation Army Church. Uh, and as I mentioned in the previous slide, as an insider researcher, I had worked at both of these organisations um, within the past 10 years, um, once as a youth worker and the second time uh, as a community assistant uh, as part of my PhD. Um, and then there were staff members who lived incarnationally. Um, that was the clergy and they were mandated to live there um, as part of their work. Um, and they were um, given a house in the area um, and that framed some of their understanding, which I'll talk about later, uh, of the social housing estate in which they were working. Uh, and then Evergreen, uh, as I mentioned before, that's an anonymised name, uh, which is the case study context. Um, and again, I'll come on to the research design shortly. It's a deprived social housing estate and one part is classed as being in the top 100 most deprived areas in the indices of multiple deprivation. So a very deprived area um, and lots of kind of poverty uh, and different experiences that are affecting the residents there. So there were three research questions um, as part of this research. So why and how do clergy staff and volunteers become involved in the two churches to be researched in the case study area? Um, so what were their, for their, their reasons for getting involved uh, and what kind of motivated them um, specifically to work or why did they feel called um, to this area of high deprivation known as the Evergreen in the research? Um, to what extent did their Christian faith have an impact on the motivation of clergy staff and volunteers, both their personal faith and that of the organisation? So how, um, for those who were Christian, how did their Christian faith inf influence that? And for those who did not describe themselves as Christian, um, how did they feel about working for a church uh, and alongside people who were Christian? And what does this case study suggest about the impacts of Christian organisations on Evergreen? Um, so what were the influences? Um, of the church organisations and how do people kind of respond to that. Um, I'll talk about some of the findings briefly um, but they will be explored further uh, in the full webinar in November. So in their research design, um, this was a case study uh, and to explore the context of Evergreen uh, there were two literature reviews. Uh, the first literature review looked at social policy and social housing and um, so kind of the development uh, of social housing estates uh, one example of which is Evergreen uh, and how social housing estates came to be uh, through different phases of social policy. And then the second literature review uh, considered motivation in church social ac action. So the reasons why people engage in church social ac action, uh, and this looks at a variety of things, uh, including some of the literature on incarnational living, uh, some of the growing good research, uh, and lots of different kind of pieces of research um, going, looking into why Christians want to work on social housing estates. Uh, Faith in the City um, was another example. Um, so a real breadth uh, of exploration uh, of both um, the way social housing estates came to be from a social policy perspective uh, and the kind of motivation for Christians to work on social housing estates um, which came through uh, motivation for church social action um, specifically with examples like Faith in the City. Uh, and then the case, uh, as part of the case study, where the churches in Evergreen uh, and those involved in them as clergy staff and volunteers. Um, and the idea of a case study is that the context and the case can't be separated. Uh, so within the motivation, Evergreen had an influence on the motivation uh, of those engaged in the case, which was the churches in Evergreen. So I'll talk briefly about some of the findings. Uh, one of them was the influence of incarnational living on clergy and the understanding that they gain from living in a social housing estate. Um, one very interesting reflection uh, was that those who were in training, uh, one person specifically, uh, talked about even though she'd been living there for a few years, 
it had taken her uh, quite a long time to get used to the culture. Um, and so one of the recommendations uh, from the research uh, is maybe having an understanding that, that clergy who are um, working in a social housing estate might take longer, particularly if they've not lived in one before, um, to be able to understand the culture um, and feel um, like part of the community. Uh, the understanding is that that takes much longer when you've not come from um, one of those uh, places that you're living. Uh, another uh, finding from the research uh, was that volunteers, um, there were examples of them both volunteering and accessing the support from the church. Uh, so the volunteers who were kind of recipients of food bank parcels, um, but also then volunteering in children's clubs. Um, and so that real kind of mix of, um, yeah, experiences in being both uh, a recipient of the support and wanting to give back, give their time back um, to help the church that they saw as having helped them um, with support such as a food parcel. Um, so one of the reasons, uh, another finding that those who did not describe themselves as Christians gave for working or volunteering within a church was linked to the working environment within a church. Um, so within the research, um, it was through the School of Education, and um, so it's a sociological reflection rather than a theological reflection uh, when exploring faith motivations. Um, and in terms of identifying whether or not people are Christians, I just asked them whether they considered themselves a Christian or not. Um, there was a real breadth of responses. Some of them said not sure. Um, so that was kind of, yeah, interesting to see how people responded to that question, particularly because they were a member of clergy working or volunteering in church. Just to be clear that all the clergy did say that they were Christian. Um, and yeah, the, the working environment was a real motivation that people found, um, even uh, particularly those who, who did not consider themselves to be Christian. Um, they really felt that the kind of the kindness and the holistic atmosphere that was shown um, was really part of the, the reason that they enjoyed working there. Um, and so that's an interesting finding for those of us uh, working in estate churches because it shows that um, people, yeah, are really um, engaged with the environment uh, and the kind of, yeah, holistic nature of the work that Christian social action organisations do. In addition, one of the reasons that the church in Evergreen is trusted by members of the local community is because of the longevity of the commitment of the church to the area. And that was shown uh, in some of the literature around motivation in church social action, uh, that there's a real um, value uh, in being in a place uh, for the long term, which churches often are, um, and it was seen in Evergreen, uh, as described by some of the participants in the research, uh, and also um, discussed more widely in social action research, that often secular organisations will come if there's a pot of funding, um, and that funding will run out in two or three years, uh, and then they will kind of move away from the estate, but there was seen to be a real strength uh, in the longevity of the churches. Um, and one of the ways this longevity of commitment is shown uh, is through my own experience. So I'm uh, in the picture, I'm the person, the small child on the right. Uh, this is me as a toddler with my mum at the parent and toddler groups. Um, and that parent and toddler group is still running today. Uh, so were I to have a child, I could take that child to the parent and toddler group and it would be running at the same day and time as it was when I was a toddler. Um, and unfortunately, the church curtains are still the same and that quite interesting green colour. Um, so yeah, that shows a real longevity of commitment um, that people can continue to be part of the, the church environment, that it's not going anywhere um, and that they're around uh, to support the community. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not there in person to answer questions um, and hopefully we'll be at the webinar so it'd be really good if you could be part of that. Uh, if you do have any questions in the meantime though, uh, my email address is amy.king at hood.ac.uk uh, that email address again, amy.king at hood.ac.uk, um, and it's on the screen there. Um, I'd be really happy to answer any questions that you've got. Do remember that this has just been a snapshot, um, so it's not really explored the breadth of the research. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you on the 26th of November. Enjoy the rest of your day.